In this video, we're still looking at evaluating limits algebraically, and we're getting closer and closer to the real algebra stuff that we want to do in this particular section. Now, problem 41 through 44 says, use the graph to determine the limit visually, if it exists. Then, write a simpler function that agrees with the given function at all but one point. So in number 41, first of all, we're asked to find the limit as x approaches 0 of g of x, and that limit is simply negative 1. Then we're asked to find the limit as x approaches negative 1 of g of x, and from the graph, that's clearly negative 2. Now, we want to take that expression g of x is equal to x squared minus x over x. And the strategy that we're going to use here is the factor and cancel approach. So first of all, we're going to factor from the numerator. Here we're still not working with limits, we're just working with this function. And by factoring out an x from the numerator, we'll get x times the quantity x minus 1 over x. Those x's cancel. And we'll get the function x minus 1 which is exactly the same as the function x squared minus 2 except at the point x is equal to 0. And we know that at x equals 0 we will get we will have a hole or a removable discontinuity in the graph there and the value the limiting the limit of that function at x equals 0 would simply be negative 1 which we can see by just plugging in 0 into x minus 1. But what we wanted to do there was to find a function, a simpler function, that agrees with the given function at all but one point. And the point where they, they don't agree is at x equals 0. Aside from that, the graph of x squared minus x over x is identical to the graph x minus 1. We'll go on to number 43. We're first just going to look at the graph and evaluate the limits there. The limit as x approaches 1 of g of x, that's 2. The limit as x approaches negative 1 of g of x, and that's 0. Again, we can see those clearly just by looking at the graph. Now we want to write a function, a simpler function, that agrees with x cubed minus x over x minus 1. We want a function that agrees with that function at all but one point. Once again, the way we're going to do this is by factoring. We factor out an x, but we still have x squared minus 1, so we're going to factor that again. And we end up with x times x minus 1 times x plus 1, and that's all divided by x minus 1. The x minus 1's will cancel, leaving us just with x times x plus 1, which agrees with the original function at all points except where x is equal to 1. Now here we're not dealing with limits, we're, we're dealing with functions, so at the end we still need to say x is not equal to 1, or above, x is not equal to 0. If we were just finding the limit, there would be no need of that, because the limit doesn't care what the value of the function is at that specific point. It just, the only thing that matters is where the y values appear to be heading from the left and from the right. And with this particular one, we could go ahead and multiply that out if we wanted. We'd get x squared plus x as long as x is not equal to 1. And that does it for these problems. All right, so now I'm actually going to go on and do the next problem, which actually takes us into limits. In problem 45, we have the limit as x approaches negative 1 of x squared minus 1 over x plus 1. We're going to factor our numerator, remembering to keep right the limit, the limit expression. So that numerator, a difference of squares, factors would be x plus 1 times x minus 1 over x plus 1. We'll cancel our x plus 1's. We end up with the limit as x approaches negative 1 of x minus 1. Here we can do direct substitution. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Since number 47 is going to require a little bit more explanation, I will take care of that in the next video.